Hi everyone, I'm Jim Vassella, lead producer on Command & Conquer 3, Kane's Wrath. Today I'm very excited to walk you through one of our new features, the Global Conquest Mode. This mode pulls back the perspective of Command & Conquer to a strategic level, allowing you to build bases on an open world map, recruit customizable strike forces, and utilize new Global Conquest exclusive support powers. You'll control a core side and its two sub-factions as you work towards achieving your faction's unique alternate victory condition, or dominate militarily and wipe your enemies off the face of the earth. Global Conquest allows you to move your strike forces and upgrade your bases on the world stage, then zoom into the tactical RTS combat you know and love. Your strategic layer decisions impact the RTS battles before they even begin, since all of the conflicting units and structures spawn right when the map loads. And if you know you're outgunned or sense an easy victory, you can always utilize Auto Resolve to skip the RTS process entirely. Global Conquest Mode is an exciting new addition to Command & Conquer, available exclusively in Kane's Wrath. This video is designed to supplement the in-game tutorial, so you should play through it if you haven't already. Here, I'll be going over some more in-depth strategies and advanced play mechanics. First, here's a refresher on the phases of gameplay in the Global Conquest Mode. There are three phases in each turn. First is the action phase. This is where you can recruit strike forces, give movement and attack commands, upgrade your bases, and use support powers. Next is the powers phase. This is where all those support powers cast during the action phase are simultaneously resolved, followed by the move and attack orders of all your strike forces. Finally, there's the battle phase. During this phase, you can choose to auto-resolve your battles or jump into tactical RTS play. After the battles are resolved, Tiberium is gathered, bases and strike forces are upgraded, and the next turn begins. There are a few key differences, though, between a tactical game in Global Conquest mode and a normal CNC skirmish. First, all the units and structures controlled by both sides spawn right when the game starts. So if you control a Tier 3 base, you'll start with those high-tech structures and have a great advantage. On the flip side, if your strike force lacks an MCV, you won't even have a build queue. Because it's possible to omit buildings from your strike force, to win a tactical game you must destroy all enemy units and structures. Now, due to this win condition, we didn't want tactical games to turn into hide and seek, so we've made a few changes to shroud and stealth detection in the Global Conquest mode. A short time after the game begins, the shroud on the minimap is revealed to show you the location of all non-stealth enemy units and structures. Then midway through the game, all enemy stealth units will be revealed as well. This means that if you're planning on utilizing a stealthy hit and run strategy, you'll need to do so quickly before the timer runs out. Both the shroud removing and stealth removing events are indicated by a timer in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Skilled players will use this transparency countdown to their advantage as they plot out their tactical strategies. If you know you can't win a match, you can also choose Surrender through the pause menu. This will forfeit your strike force and leave all remaining enemy units intact for the next battle. One final note, strike forces and bases are persistent. This means that even if you win the tactical battle, your casualties will be reflected on your strike force. The next time this force engages, defeated units will not spawn. Strike forces can be repaired within the radius of a base by clicking Repair Strike Force. Also, even though strike forces with MCVs can create units, your strike force will never finish with more units than it began. If you're having trouble winning your tactical matches, here's a few tricks to improve your odds on the world stage. First, upgrade base defenses and power. You can do this on the command bar when you have a base selected. This will cause the base to spawn with more power plants and advanced base defenses right off the bat. Another note about defense, if you have a friendly strike force near your base, those units will spawn with your base when it's under siege. In essence, you have the ability to garrison nearby bases, so it is imperative that you keep some defensive strike forces nearby. You can also improve your odds by using support powers. These powers are unlocked through strategic structures, which can be built at Tier 3 bases. Each base can only have one strategic structure. All three factions also have super weapons and epic units, each of which is unlocked via a unique strategic structure. Super weapons deal a lot of damage to strike forces and bases, and since they resolve immediately before attack and move commands, they're great for softening up your target before charging in with your troops. Strike forces containing epic units are devastating on the battlefield, and also affect cities and Tiberium on the world map. There can only be one epic unit per strike force, but multiple epic units can exist on the world stage. 
all three factions also have an arsenal of new support powers. First off, we have the GDI Commando Strike. This prevents one enemy base or strike force from receiving orders until the beginning of the next action phase. Nod has Guerrilla Repairs, which instantly repairs a damaged strike force anywhere in the world. And the Skrin can use Orbital Bombardment to damage enemy bases and strike forces in the targeted area. Once you get the hang of Global Conquest mode, you may want to create your own custom strike forces. You can do this by selecting Create from the Recruit Strike Force screen, or from the main menu by choosing Global Conquest mode, then Custom Strike Forces. Always be mindful of the base tier requirement and cost of the strike forces you create. An army of avatars may be ultra devastating, but you probably won't be able to afford it for some time. Once you save and name your strike force, your custom creation will appear in the Recruit Strike Force list. Well there you have it, that's all you need to know to take over the world by force. Global Conquest games can sometimes take several hours to resolve, so be sure to save often. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, do yourself a favor and pick up Kane's Wrath in stores now.